movement selection. So again, this goes into correct movements. And what are those correct movements? And that's where we get into therapeutic yoga, rehabilitation. You know, these are exercises designed to help with joint tissue or specifically areas that are lacking nutrition. And what I mean is movement nutrition, like a deficiency because of lack of movement. So as you increase your movement, you're increasing your mental capacity and your physical capacity, and you're feeding the tissue with nutrients. So again, we're farming our body for the future. So we also want to cultivate extracellular matrix hydration through movement. That's it again, it's movement, movement, movement. But it also, which is important, is the nervous system having a healthy balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So sympathetic is your fight or flight, and parasympathetic is rest and digest. There's a theory called uh, the polyvagal theory, which is a book I brought that I uh, want to briefly discuss, but essentially they believe there's three systems, and the third one is freeze. So they show that animals under distress while they're being attacked, they actually go into a freeze, and they totally give up and end up getting eaten, but they think that... Not always, not always. Not always, I right. You're, you're 100% right. Because the animal might say, oh, it's sick and dead, I'm gonna let it go. Like, why did it freeze? So it lets the animal go. Some predators can't manifest predating behavior unless they have prey behavior to stimulate. Good point. <laughs> Good point. So um, in the polyvagal theory for humans, uh, when people are feeling depressed, that's the same thing as the freeze. Mm -hmm. So it's like our body is calming us down, it's shutting us down, it's depressing our system. So in the polyvagal theory book, um, it goes into some exercises how to reestablish a better connection and put you back into parasympathetic. So I'm gonna share that with you today. And here's a cool little study, power posing. Ah. So this study showed that by maintaining a dominant power position, it actually will spike my testosterone and lower my cortisol. Cool. And what's really cool is that the opposite happens too. So if you have a very shy or closed off, uh, constrictive posture, you're actually gonna increase your cortisol and lower your testosterone. So why is this important? It's important because the way you carry yourself is gonna change your chemical balance in your body. So being conscious of how you move is going to affect your chemistry. Again, your fluids. So we're all about moving fluids. So searching for movements. At first I was seeking movements for my athleticism and then I started seeking them for non-traumatic pain. So I was dealing with lower back pain that I received from a, just received. So I didn't have an injury that caused my lower back pain. And at the time, I was 23. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I feeling this achiness in my lumbar? Like, I'm fit, I'm training hard, I'm, I'm lifting heavy. I mean, I just couldn't make sense of why my back hurts. And then, through research and finding the right people, I started to unravel this puzzle of my lower back pain and started getting directed to the right people. So what was happening is that I was overtraining in a way that was compressing my lumbar spine and that was through tight hips and my psoas muscle compressing down on my anterior side of my lumbar and creating probably some disc bulges but luckily I never had a failure and so I think I've been able to rehab it properly. And that leads me to this guy, Chris Duffin. So this big old burly man is from Washington and he's in Portland, Oregon. And he's a world record holder for power lift. He's like, he did the record for lightest man to lift over a thousand pounds on a deadlift. The guy's an absolute monster. Squats 800 pounds. Beast. Okay, why did I bring him up? Well, for me, I was very fascinated with a human that could lift that amount and not be in pain, right? Because I was lifting a lot, but I was in pain. So I was confused. 
Well, after researching him, he led me to this video of how to squat. And this was on YouTube. And essentially, he provided warm-up exercises that I had never done before. Like I had done stretching and I've done a few things for warming up the body, but he had a whole new catalog of exercises that I had never seen. And they were stabilizing the hip and the glute complex and incorporating the adductors and getting the pelvic floor involved and all this different stuff that I'd never thought about before. So I started incorporating his warm up that he provides to you in this video and my back pain started going away. And you can lift 1,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never got there. I never got there. But um, essentially my lower back pain started going away and I'm like, okay, this guy's onto something. Not only can he lift a ton of weight, which you have to be onto something to do that. Like you're, you have to be mechanically working well to lift heavy. So I started researching all his material and trying to figure out what did he know that allowed him to share that information, information. And that led me to dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, also known as DNS. Boom, DNS. So this is uh, Pavel Collage, and he's a physiotherapist by training who holds a doctorate in pediatrics. This guy is unbelievable. He's the Olympic sports team for the Czech Republic and does all their therapy. He works with Roger Federer, the tennis player. This guy is an amazing therapist. And um, essentially his instructors are Carl Luet, uh, uh, Volta, and Yanda. And these people, Vladimir Yanda. And essentially these are therapists that have been laying the groundwork for all physical therapy practices. These are like the, the founding fathers. And then what he's done is taking their influences and applied it to pediatrics, which is really fascinating material. So let's break this down. What he's doing right now is he's currently directing extensive research in his department uh, concerning developmental kinesiology and its application early diagnosis of central nervous system disorders in newborn and infants. So what does that mean? As a pediatric, he's always with babies and kids and infants and he's observing how they move and he's realizing that if they're not developing their movements properly that they most likely have a central nervous system problem their brain development isn't working correctly like most children during the uh, maturation so essentially what he's created is a program where you follow the child's development as an adult and it goes through your system and re reawakens your movement patterns that you had as a child. If I ask you who taught you how to walk, you're gonna say yourself. Because no one actually was there. 10 more reps, let's go, five more, keep it coming. All right, you're gonna walk soon. Well, they would get called, the uh, social services would get called on those parents. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, so. I know you can do it. <laughs> you fell over, you can stand up. Get back up. Well, um, this is really cool because he's working with uh, cerebral palsy kids and trying to correct them by giving them new movement patterns to help them redevelop their system, their nervous system. So I went to this class because of Chris Duffin, the power lifter. He was like, he's all into the DNS stuff. So at this class specifically, he was there, which was kind of fun. Because I took Chris Duffin's movement class to learn how to power lift and bench press and do big lifts, which was fun. Um, and I was lifting 360 pounds on my back doing squats at each class. And then I went to this class and they're like, let's see your lower back. So they had me take off my shirt and they're examining from behind. And I have like a whole row of chiropractors and physical therapists all observing the, the case study and I'm going through the movements and essentially the lady comes up to me and she goes, have you been squatting? And I was like, yeah, actually I, I'd squat pretty heavy. She goes, if I were you, I wouldn't load your back for a month. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's wrong with me? You know, like what is she observing in my tissue that makes her say, 
no more lifting for you. And it was a pretty bizarre experience because here I am in the room with the guy, Chris Duffin, who I just did his class lifting heavy weight because he has this um, force leak technique where essentially you want to load the lift to find the weakness in the lift. So you're going to find where the failure is and then you correct that to make it stronger. So it's a force leak technique. Um, anyways, uh, I ended up following the presenter's information and I stopped squatting. And I decided at that moment I was just going to go into full rehabilitation of my body and quit lifting weights and just focus on body weight and focus on learning how to control myself properly without moving weights. And then that leads me to my own idea where like, if you can't move your body well, then why are you gonna move other objects? So it's this idea that you wanna learn how to move proficiently yourself, and then we can start playing with other tools. But until you're very competent, I feel like there's so much to gain in body movement exercises before you even start picking up equipment. I mean, and that's the thing is you go to the gyms, a lot of box gyms have all sorts of machines that they sell people and they're so excited to get on them and press on them and feel a little pump. But the reality is they're isolating the tissue and they're not thinking like globally and like how does this work towards walking and running and like how does that in isolated movement carry over. And then that leads into like psychological things as far as like chasing aesthetics and bodybuilding and in the DNS program um, they go big on this whole bodybuilding idea of health which is prevalent in the United States mostly because of Hollywood where they have these physiques and everyone wants that guy's physique so they train in a certain way but if you look at like a ballet dancer their body's totally different and it can recruit better and be more global. What does recruit mean? Recruit like um, send a nerve signal down to the motor tissue, the motor unit, and then active the muscle. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Like um, irradiation is another. Better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Be able to just function in your body better, better body awareness. Okay. So DNS revolves around developmental kinesiology and its application for patients and athletes. Um, so following the development of a child from birth to 12 months, which is really cool. We're going to do some of the flows today where we start in our three month and then we're going to progress all the way to standing, which is a lot of fun. So then there's people that are arguing, we're not babies. So why are we doing baby patterns? Like even the length between our necks different and the head weight and all this stuff is different than the proportions of a baby. But what I was discussing with another exercise trainer from this program is that when you look at the top athletes and how they're moving, like Roger Federer swinging a racket, he's, his body patterns will show up what a healthy baby's doing for stabilization. And a lot of surfers use this program as well. And if you see a surfer on the board, and you see a baby trying to get up, it's the same idea, where he's stabilizing himself to stand or stabilizing himself on a surfboard. So the reason we're doing these infant movement patterns is because they're around stabilizing the baby and adults that are really good athletes show these same patterns. So I'm gonna take anyone or that I think everyone could benefit. To me, it's like going to your computer and resetting it. It's giving yourself a better signal. So, um, if children are born with physical disabilities, in understanding this system that's developing, to repattern them, repatterns the brain, and can, in a lot of cases, bring them to be fullness instead of apparatuses and what's going on. That's what uh, Dr. Pablo Collage is trying to do. The other thing is, um, I had back trouble, four and five, and I overdid it and almost collapsed my back like you were talking about. I went to PT, loved the people, didn't help me. It seemed like they're in a, what you're saying and what they're doing, I knew they weren't helping me, 
They're just doing what they think they need to do, and nothing was accomplished at the end of it. So I left. I gave them a chance to do it. Because all they were doing was trying to stretch me, or tell me to stretch, and nothing worked. You know, I mean, my brain knows what... Right, you were still in pain. So. Well, I didn't accomplish anything. And right. What, so when you were talking about how to move the body, when he's training here, and the weights, what's coming into my mind is that you're educating that body, the muscle, and the structure for what you're going to be doing. And so the core is being strengthened, and then you're building on top of that to do your weights. Right. So PT would do well to learn how to decompress people and get into those problems and then alleviate their pain so they can move. Am I getting what you're saying? Yes, and part of the problem that we're dealing with is the educational system and that what those institutions are providing to the PTs. So I'm a trainer. I don't have, I'm not a physical therapist and I'm not a doctor of chiropractic. I got accepted into chiropractic school and was going to go do it. And then it was $150,000. And I thought that was a lot of money. <laughs> and um, what was interesting is I started going to all these classes, which um, we're going to get to. But um, let's see if we can get to it right now. So when I went, so I started with Chris Duffin, right? I had lower back pain. Chris Duffin told me about DNS. I started seeking out DNS. While I was at the DNS classes, I ran into these R2P guys. And I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> and that's when I realized the rehab to performance spectrum. And I'm like, okay, let me see who's there as a staff member. And these are the top therapists. These are the world renowned people, the experts that are a part of this organization. I'm like, wow, this is cool. Do they have a certification or do they have an education program? So I started looking into that. And what I saw was to become a certified rehab to performance exercise trainer, you had to go through a 150 hour curriculum. What was really cool about the curriculum was that it gave you a list of every single certification available. Like 20, 30 different certifications, all from different schools of thoughts, different uh, PTs, different doctors of chiropractic that took their information and packaged it in a way, right? So I started going through all these classes and every time I went to a class, there was doctors of physical therapy and doctors of chiropractic there. And I'm the only trainer. Maybe like a few classes had other trainers here, but it was all doctors. And they're like, why are you here? And I'm like, well, I like to move and I want to learn how to move better. Why are you here? <laughs> like you, after your $150,000, why are you taking this? Yeah, I'm like, why are you here? It saved you a lot of money. And they're like, well, this is where the cutting edge information is. Oh. I said, really? They go, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just going to all these classes. I'm trying to become an R2P uh, trainer. They go, well, you're doing the right thing because you're going to all the courses that we wish we could afford to go to and it's only costing you this much money when we're already in debt this much money and still have to go seek further information, further instruction. So from my perspective, I was like, okay, we got a problem here. The entire system's trash. And then on top of that, like, my grandfather had passed away at the time. 65 and older, slip and fall, that's the number one killer. 65 and older, slip and fall is the number one killer. So he had a slip and fall, he ended up in the hospital, but I went to support him through the PT. And at the time, I was just a basic trainer, right? Basic knowledge. So we're doing little reps with the dumbbells and leg extensions and pedaling on the bike. And it's a hoorah, hoorah, because they're there, right? But the thing is, it wasn't until after I became educated that I realized the service they were providing. And it was horrendous. Because there were so many different things I learned that he could have used. And it's, it upsets me a lot, thinking about it. Mm -hmm.